congratulations on the new album, Three. It just came out today. This has to be exciting, right? Anytime you release uh, some new music, it's you got to have the butterflies a little bit, right? Yeah, every album day release, uh, we're kept so busy, it's hard to, we never really get to savor it. <laughs> so, is Friday the 13th lucky in the Canadian culture? Um, Does Canada have a culture? Like a I'm trying to remember. <laughs> yeah. We're going to say it is. I think if it wasn't before, it certainly is now. You guys are going to change the tide on Friday the 13th. Yeah, good deal. Lucky number. Yeah. There you TGIF. Go. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of lucky numbers, the album, it's called Three, and then you guys did a really interesting thing where you separated it into three kind of segments, if you will, a three songs a piece. Was this just simply because it's the third album, or does the number three have some sort of special like resonance with you guys? Holy Trinity. Um, well... It's a it's an uncreative title because it's our third record and that's probably where it started. We just we wanted it to be a neutral sounding title and then it became these three characters kind of emerged as after we wrote the record and looked at it and then we really enjoyed our friends giving us these kind of shorter albums like EPs. We we take them home and immediately listen to them and we thought, well, why don't we do that for our fans if we like it? I'm guessing a lot of other people could like it in that way. So it was a it was a way to we we joked that it's like a way to trick people into listening to your music like <laughs> the whole body of work because they're not intimidated by this homework assignment of like we, an entire album. We've also found that people have like an insatiable appetite for TV. They'll be like, I watched Stranger Things season three last night, the whole season, and then you give them an album, and they're like, Whoa, let me let me give you a, give me a month, like I'll get yeah. back to you. It's just weird, and that's like thirty eight minutes in some cases. So. Well, at the uh, at the Q and A after your uh, after the TIFF premiere of the film, which again, congratulations! Uh, Thank you. The yeah. two of you had said that it's kind of a rare occurrence, but this record, which is your third, is your favorite. You think it's the best work you've put out, and and you also said that that's unusual for that to be so for a band. Why why do you think this is your best? Is it because it's so new? Do you think that maybe in a couple of years after it's had some time to marinate, you're going to have the same answer? It's like, I think it's the second best record. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I think of it more like you you don't even know how if you'll be lucky enough to have a good record in you at any point. And when it happens and you feel proud of it, I'm just grateful for that. So I felt like, you know, with music, there's not that much ownership and there's not that much ego in what we do. It's more like you're an antenna and you're like transmitting a signal that you were lucky to be open to and broadcast down and you just jot it down you know it wasn't even yours so i feel like we're a part of something special so making this video making this entire film um brought more attention to to the stories we were telling and it felt like an opportunity because we believed strongly in the music and and uh it just felt like the right the right thing to do and we had to we had to do things ourselves a lot of it and um I think that also taught us if we really wanted to do it or not. It wasn't like someone was overly financially supportive. We kind of financed ourselves with a little bit of help from the label. So it was that, too. I mean, we took a cue from, like, Beyonce. We had heard that she put tons of her own money into it. It was like, well, if Beyonce can do it, <laughs> we can do something like that. Probably not on that scale, but no less explosions. But it was, I mean, it felt well worth it. And it, it's sort of in a, you're, you're betting on yourself in a way. I wanted to talk about some of the themes with three. Um, the visual album, if you will, is stunning. It's beautiful. It's sad, and it's dark at times. And it touches on, you know, substance abuse and, and alcoholism and addiction issues. What made you guys kind of gravitate towards that as a theme? Does that come from? And, and excuse me if I'm stepping out of bounds. And if you don't want to answer, that's fine. But does that come from any personal experience of of people in your own lives? Well, yeah, I mean. I think um, if we asked everybody in this room and you walked outside and asked some random stranger, it's weird, but the chances are that someone has uh, had a brush with addiction in some way, whether it's their own life, their family, their extended family. So for me, it was um, I was dealing with something in my family life, my sort of extended family, where I didn't understand it and it was really troubling and music was a way to express it and try to, you know, they talk about exercising demons. It was like, how do I put this out of me so that it's not possessing me, you know? Mm -hmm. And so it's a great gift to be a musician and be able to be your own therapist sometimes. And yeah. so sitting down and writing these songs and expressing these complex feelings towards it and trying to empathize with someone that really frustrates you 
and you love at the same time or really hurts you and you love at the same time. I think that was the that was the impetus for it and it became almost like weirdly repetitive like Donna and Gloria and Leader of the Landslide and all these songs started bleeding into one theme but at first I think we were we were wondering if that was a little too much but it felt honest so we just went with it and um that I think every every song that is worth its salt you know ha- has to it has to come from like a real place and the, and the things that happen in life are so much stranger than the things you can make up mm-hmm. so so I think that's the simple answer is it came from real experience the idea though was to sort of try to disguise their identity a little bit so that in the process of telling the story you're not you're not shaming that person because mm-hmm. it, it is it is a disease, truly, and I didn't realize that going into it. I, I sort of thought it was a willpower thing, and for some people, it's just not that simple. Yeah. Well, again, with the themes of substance abuse and addiction, you know, uh, across North America, you two are American, we are in Canada. We have a huge problem with opioid addiction right now, and uh, I'm just curious maybe if you could speak to the parallels between your project, where we see uh, not necessarily opioids, it's alcohol, but but what are the parallels between what we see on screen and what we see in real life. Well, I mean, for me, that that hits really hit close to home, the opioid family, unfortunately. My older brother died of a heroin drug overdose, which is, of course, in that same terrible class of opioids. And, you know, our president, I think the only good thing he did was declare an opioid crisis in the United States. And uh, it was sad, but also a weird, really weird, complex sense of relief in some way that my brother was not just an aberration, but he was part of this big statistic. And I had kind of conflicting feelings where I thought, you know, it afflicted a lot of people. So in a, in a weird way, it gave me this weird solace that it was like, which is really messed up to say, but it was like, oh, my brother, it, I think it showed me, I guess what I'm trying to say is it showed me how powerful and how rampant the thing was. It just didn't happen to my brother um, in the suburbs of New Jersey. You know, it happened to everybody all over the the country and it sounds like it's happening in Canada too is that what you're saying Mm -hmm. it is happening here in Canada um I think the things we see is like you know Gloria the mother of um well we see we see Jimmy Sparks the son and Gloria the as a very young child with the, the vodka bottle and I think that's a great manifestation or a metaphor if you will of taking these inheritance, uh whether that's a genetic trait such as an addictive gene which is sort of this elusive unscientific but also kind of scientific uh thing that occurs and i think that whether it is opioids or alcohol it's pretty um it's kind of semantics at that point it's arbitrary i think um we see junior sparks left with this crossroads of can he sort of defeat the demons that he's been given from his parents and his grandmother gloria can he you know choose the right path and uh Yeah, it's really sad, but I think it's good to talk about it through storytelling instead of telling somebody, you know, don't do drugs, just say no. That was a big thing when Wes and I were growing up in New Jersey. It was like the D.A.R.E. program, just say no. Yeah, so simple, right? Just say no. You know, a lot of people... Abstinence really works. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. So I think this was um, a crude look at a crude thing. I mean, it's a very dark um, thing, addiction. It's very kind of disgusting, pathetic. It's sad. It makes you angry. It makes you empathize. It brings out a lot of sympathy in your humanity about people. So it's a very complex subject, and I think through the stories um, is a good way to like start that conversation. Absolutely, I think you guys have done a really great job of starting that conversation, and you know, kind of depicting an honest look at it. And the album is so beautiful. The music is so beautiful. It's so fantastic. The, the the film as well is so beautiful and it makes me wonder you've got this tour coming up as well how do you top that what's the next level when you take this live on the road just bring the actors out <laughs> play it on stage live we should do that once at least. yeah that would be um, cool well i think i think one of the things that uh was very thoughtful of uh one of the producers on set um he was he was suggesting um, that we take you know footage of the home that it shot and the f- that the home became sort of a, a central character in a way that was the director's intention was to have that be actually like a presence of its own, and um, and so we we took footage of the characters in different ways and of the house and the setting so that when we're playing live we can kind of put those images on the screen and it's not really lifting from a video it's not like I've seen that before but you sort of have, mm-hmm. um, so. Trying to, cr- we tried to create this little world, this little universe with characters, and then who, and then try to 
sort of hint at that on stage without, you know, hitting play on the Gloria video and starting the song Gloria. That wouldn't really, uh, I don't know, that wouldn't be that interesting. So that that's something we've tried to do. And we've also experimented with playing the album live in, in chapters. And some some chapters are really easy to break up and the songs can go anywhere. And then, for example, the last chapter, which came out today, um, it, it really belongs together. When you hear it, they, they, the songs kind of lean on each other and they you understand them as a whole. So um, we've already toured on the on the music a lot uh, compared to anything we've done in the past. Usually we were we were sort of like two weeks on the road and the album came out this time. It was like five months, mm -hmm. you know. So uh, we feel a lot more prepared also to play these songs and someone's getting a real real show and not like this, like we're still figuring this out. Yeah. So it's it's a good feeling. Awesome. Thank you once again for the new album, Three. It's out today. Uh, the film is stunning. It's wonderful. So um, it was very cool to see you guys premiere that at TIFF. And thank you so much for popping by it. Yeah, thanks for having us. Yeah, thank Appreciate you. It. Good luck with the tour. We're thank looking you. forward to it. Thanks a lot.